Well, on that note, one final question. Um, as you just mentioned, uh, and as I indicated in the beginning of this broadcast, uh, this following week, we will have all six members of the LaRouche PAC Policy Committee in the Washington, D.C. area. We already have very significant meetings that have been set up with members of Congress, um, and we expect that this will be this will have a very uh, dramatic impact on the events of the next uh, six or seven days. Now, I want to ask a question on this theme, and it really continues the remarks that you made this past Monday in the discussion that we engaged in with the policy committee, where you said the responsibility lies with you, the people who are in this room, very few people, but the very small handful of people who have succeeded in grasping the intellectual insight necessary to provide real leadership for the nation. And as you've repeatedly emphasized, leadership doesn't lie in the majority but often leadership lies in the minority, in the small minority, often in the very small minority who possess that intellectual insight and the courage to lead. So I would ask as a final question, uh, as a prelude to the events of the coming week with the uh, incoming policy committee, uh, what is the challenge that we have to take up if a very small minority of us are going to succeed in leading this country? Well, as you know, I am 90 years of age. And therefore, when you get to be 90 years of age, with my background and experience, you tend to say, well, this is not going to continue forever. And therefore, it's the time to focus on things which will have permanent value when I am gone. And that's the most important kind of mission you can have at my age and, under, and circumstances and so forth and, and experience. I've been all over the world practically. I've been involved in everything. I've top, turned things upside down in various parts of the planet repeatedly. I'm good at that. And therefore now I have to take this wonderful good policy and ability to, to put it to work for my final run for making anything very big happen. Right? And therefore, I'm concerned to do this purpose. Now, in the process, because of what I do and what my temperament is to do, uh, is essentially we, ha we have some young people. They're not that young anymore. We're going into the 30s department right now at, be at the best. Uh, so any in any case, what these young people have and the on this particular committee happen to be people who have exceptional capabilities and they have enhanced those exceptional capabilities greatly during the past several years. <clears throat> so therefore if I you call them together as a team and if you have heard, some of you may have heard the conversations that go on among these people which I have every practically every Monday but for some years now and they have not only been very bright very capable from the beginning. They've been candidates for office, federal office, but they're also especially gifted. And when you put them together, which is what I understand very well, when you take some individual people who are very good, each good in terms of what their capabilities are, and then you give them several years of experience to, of working together for a common actions to common ends with a great variety of different kinds of things you do as these common ends. And when, they are, when you assemble them together, as, de, as, keeping, as opposed to keeping them separate, so to speak, or being separate, you get an effect where they, they jam together, they lodge together, and they're capable of immediately responding at a highly rapid rate for great tasks. And what they have done and the record exists in terms of the records of our, our organization. We've seen time and time again the kind of thing that we call leadership, real leadership. They have it. And they have this kind of leadership. So that when it comes to the question of ideas, they are very knowledgeable in many fields. They have all been d demonstrated and tested to have this ability. 
So the idea was take the whole organization that we have, put it into operation around the Congress. The Congress is the center point of reference for us. And pull this, these forces together and use that as a vehicle to draw together other people who may not always agree with each other and to bring them together with a, with a mission of the type I spoke of tonight. Let's take the, let's take the people of the Congress and look at the, the body of the Congress as containing people who, if they're pulled together in the right way, whatever party they come from, if they're pulled together in the right way on the question of forming a new sort of government now, which can be done. We can push the president into the places he belongs, but not big things above that. He should just be modestly the president for as long as he chooses to remain president. And he might not like our conditions, so therefore he might want to go away because he doesn't like what we do. Huh? All right. But anyway, if, we, if the Congress moves together to get the glass deal through and to recognize that Glass-Steagall is the core, but only the core, of the reforms which have to be in, in, to save the nation. The purpose is to save the nation, to rebuild it, to get it out of the, out of the dirt and back into the pride it used to represent in these various states and areas I've indicated. That is what has to be done. I think it's possible to do that in this coming week. It's possible. The question is, make it happen. Well, thank you very much, Lynn. Um, that will bring a conclusion to our broadcast for tonight. I'd also like to thank Leandra Bernstein for joining me in the studio. And I thank all of you for watching. That's the end of our broadcast. Good night.